The impact of this recession is real, and it is everywhere. But while our economy may be weakened, and our confidence shaken, though we are living through difficult and uncertain times, tonight I want every American to know this. We will rebuild, we will recover, and the United States of America will emerge stronger than before. So that was a little bit of Barack Obama in his address to Congress. This is Gabe Cook with Debate Kansas City. And if you want to sound like Barack Obama, someone who is known as a tremendous speaker, even if you don't like Barack Obama, you typically respect his speaking skills, I can help you sound more like Barack Obama in a debate round and more like a compelling and persuasive policy debater. And what I'm going to do today is give you two different activities that you can go through and if you do you'll become a better debater first I'm going to talk about some general speaking skills then I'm going to give you two specific exercises that you can practice in order to become a better speaker first let's talk about what makes a good speaker in a policy debate round the first thing you want to do is be clear you want to make sure that all the words coming out of your mouth are understandable you also want to have a proper pace you don't want to go too fast or too slow, and you also want to vary your pace. In the clip I just showed, when Barack Obama was talking about how tough the economy was, he talked slow. But when he talked about how the American people were going to achieve, he began to speed up his pace a bit to build hope. You add dramatic effect by slowing down, and you can add intensity by speaking up. You also can change your voice inflection. Sometimes you might talk in a deeper voice. Sometimes you might talk in a higher voice. You can also add humor as you speak, which isn't something we're going to delve into today. We're more about the mechanics of it. Um, you want to be organized, and you want to have proper posture when you talk. You want to try and stand straight, look the judge directly in the eye, and don't be afraid of eye contact. The more eye contact that you can make, even in a policy debate round, the better off you are, especially for community judges. You can also consider ways to use your hand. Maybe you have evidence in one hand, and then you gesture with the other hand at different times to complement your speech. And last, you want to think about your facial expressions and try and make eye contact directly with the judge. Remember, you don't need to look at your opponent. You need to be looking at the judge because they're the one who's going to decide who wins the debate round or not. So those are some general speaking skills. Now I want to talk about some speaking skills when you're reading evidence in a debate round. First, let's think about what evidence can provide. Well, one, it can provide you facts that you can use in the debate round. You might have some sort of statistic or fact that proves why an argument is true or isn't. The second thing that evidence can provide is analysis or opinion. An expert on a given topic looks at all the facts and then provides an opinion. And you can stand by that author and say, this person has done analysis. They've got these reasons that my argument is correct, um, which proves that this argument is true and should help me win the debate round. Um, in a debate round, the evidence you use can vary in length. A typical piece of evidence, which is something we also call a card, is going to be about a paragraph. Uh, you can see this first one at the top of the page is shorter, the one on the bottom of the page is longer. And one thing to keep in mind when you're reading this evidence is that you want to read the bolded information. This bold piece is the tag, and that's basically a summary of the evidence. This bold piece here, where it says Foster Electric Report, that's the source of the evidence and you want to make sure that you read both of those. Then if you look at the evidence itself, you find that certain parts are underlined and that's because you have time constraints in a debate round. So what you want to do is read the underlined portions and you can even take a look at your debate evidence and make it even shorter by grabbing a highlighter and in addition to the underline, highlight over to make the evidence even that much shorter, which can be easier to use. So make sure that you read the tag, you read the citation, and then you read the evidence itself. After you read the evidence, uh, especially if you have a community judge, you want to explain why it's useful. You want to say this evidence makes this argument, this argument is important in this debate round because, and that shows that you understand the evidence and you're explaining to the judge why it is useful. So let's talk about a couple exercises that you can do. All right, the first exercise that you can do is called Make It Sound Beautiful. Uh, 
It's an exercise that you'll find in the Debate Kansas City High School Guidebook, which is under the Resources link uh, on our web blog. And basically, what you do in this exercise is grab yourself some evidence. Um, if I was a policy debater, I might check out the solution evidence. Um, the federal RPS will fail, especially if I was going to the upcoming Debate Kansas City Middle School Tournament. You will notice that it is on page 43. So I would get this evidence and I would just practice reading it to make it sound good. So if I'm reading evidence and it sounds something like this, a federal RPS would ruin state programs, be unfair and inefficient, foster electric report December 5th, 2007. If Congress passes a national renewable portfolio standard, the states are going to be in a state of chaos. That doesn't sound so good, right? Sort of monotone and boring. Now check it out. If I try to make it sound beautiful, I really try to put some gusto in it. A federal RPS would ruin state programs, be unfair and inefficient. From the Foster Electric Report, December 5th, 2007, if Congress passes a national, national renewable portfolio standard, the states are going to be in a state of chaos because they're not going to know how their programs integrate with the federal program. David Owens of the Edison Electric Institute, Executive Vice President, told participants, Owens added that he believes in acting a federal RPS would be inequitable and inefficient. Currently, 25 states have adopted renewable programs, and those states have a clear understanding of what energy sources are available and what the impacts will be on electricity rates. So you can kind of see the difference there. You want to try to make the evidence sound like my second version, where you try to insert meaning into it. You're using this evidence to tell a story. This particular evidence is arguing that we shouldn't have the federal government do a renewable portfolio because it's going to hurt the programs the state governments have already enacted. You need to know that and you need to put that message into the evidence itself. So what you do is you just take a sheet of paper, you grab some evidence, and you try to make it sound as persuasive as you possibly can. And you just practice that over and over and pick evidence that you think you're going to read in a lot of different debate rounds. Now let's talk about the second exercise that you can do. It's called Sum It Up, So What? And in this exercise, what you do is you read the piece of evidence similar uh, in to make it sound beautiful, but at the end you add an explanation. So I just read the federal RPS would ruin state programs. Let's say that I've just got done reading that again. This time I would add in, look, this evidence from the Foster Electric Report quotes an Electricity Institute executive saying that federal RPSs would cause state programs to dive into a state of chaos, that they'll have no idea how to integrate the programs. And the evidence also says that 25 states already have a federal RP or that 25 states already have a renewable portfolio standard in Anyway, here's why this evidence matters. First of all, it means that the federal plan won't work. Second of all, if 25 state programs have already enacted an RPS, why do we need the federal government to do it? We're already halfway there. Continue to let the states do it, and the whole system will be better off. That explanation was a little lengthy, uh, potentially, but you, you're getting at what I uh, want you to, hopefully, which is that you just need to explain what the evidence says. And one other tip, you'll notice a couple of times as I was reading the evidence, I stumbled. All I did was just keep going. Don't say, oh, I'm sorry, or, or draw more attention to it when you stumble. Just keep reading the evidence. So I've given you some tips on what you want to sound like when you read debate evidence and a couple exercises. Make it sound beautiful where you just read the evidence and try to sound persuasive. Then you add sum it up so what to it, where after you read the evidence, you explain why it's important and why it matters in the debate round. Hope it helps. Hope you become a better speaker, and maybe you'll get closer to sounding like President Obama. Gabe Cook with Debate Kansas City, telling you to take care.